and here's here's the deal. Whenever you know, whenever something you know challenging happens, and that's what we we all have a challenge here. The, this mm-hmm. this COVID nineteen virus is challenging our entire society, and right. right now there's a lot of uncertainty. But it's always fun to think of something that causes you to maybe knock on wood and say, you know, I'm really fortunate that it didn't happen then. And that mm-hmm. was one of the things I thought with you. Mm-hmm. If we re if we were to rewind a year back and this had happened this time a year ago, it wipes out all the spring sports like it did this year. Yeah. And your your shining moment, so to speak, the moment that really put Sinclair Johnson on the map in her sport wouldn't have happened. So yeah. you can knock on wood and say, Well, at least it this this virus didn't come around last year because that would have been yeah. really bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even, like, that obviously would have been really bad, but I think also I feel like now, I mean, I didn't have any doubts before about going pro, but now I definitely don't have any doubts um, because I don't think that if I had gone back to school, I would have, um, a signed a contract this year and B definitely when I'm signed a contract for um, as much as I got from Nike um, in the fall. So I feel like in that way, I was like, I had so many people actually like reach out to me and they're like, wow, thank God you went pro. Right. Um, Cause it's just like the timing of everything happening obviously sure. would have been, I'm sure Nike would have been like, um, I think you need to go back to school for another year. So it would have delayed things even more. So, yeah, definitely happy with uh, that, the way things played out. And definitely happy that this is happening this year while I'm already um, under a professional contract than than last year when I was, like, um, on the cusp of signing a professional contract. So (laughs) definitely fortunate in that aspect. Yeah, and and again, it, it was it's what put you on the map. I mean, yeah, you became exactly. you became a star in the sport that that day in Austin. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So. And if that would have been, you know, completely taken away, like I don't know who knows what would have happened. And so, yeah, very fortunate that this is um, happening at the time it is happening. One of the things I enjoy with uh my job when i get a chance to talk with your coach with dave smith mm-hmm. is and i noticed this when we we first started having him on the show and and i did a, a few stories with him talking about cross country and the way he goes about it i love the fact that uh you know it, to him the mental part of this sport and i'm not just talking mental toughness i'm talking the mental thinking of, right. of thinking how to win and strategize and, and win races is as important as the physical talent. And mm-hmm. that's something I enjoy. How much have you taken from that? How much have you learned from him in your time at Oklahoma State about trying to outthink your opponent? Yeah, I think um, I think he really stresses working on that mental aspect of things in practice um, or just like and honestly, everyday life, whether that be with school, with relationships, um, things like that in general. And because once you start thinking that way and, you know, thinking of yourself as someone who's tough and who's someone who can, you know, overcome any kind of situation, um, stuff like that, then it starts to kind of like transform into other um, or translate into other aspects of your life. So I think once, assuming when he, um, to lectures to us about like hey like you really need to take school seriously like just taking school seriously then you're taking your running seriously and then you know you take other things in your life seriously um so i think that he has really made a holistic approach at um at, at the, basically um um uh, explaining how important that mental side of things is and um I think before in high school, you kind of just run pretty carefree and don't really like think about things and stuff. And then it gets a little bit more serious in college. Um, so then that mental aspect definitely comes into play. Um, so I think that he, by stressing it and, you know, um, by practice, by stressing it, by, sorry, by stressing 
to practice that in um, practice or um, in your everyday life, then it correlates into races and it correlates into competing and um, and stuff like that. So it's not like that he specifically tells you what you need to think about or what you need to be doing during a race in terms of that, but it's more so just like having this confidence in yourself and having this belief in yourself and whatever you do, um, whether that be on or off the track. Yeah. The other thing that, that you and other athletes in your sport are, are kind of fortunate with is, you know, um, the whole goal in a, in a race is to socially distance. You want, yeah. you want to distance yourself from the competition. And when right. you train, I mean, it's nice to have a, a, a partner you're training with, to, you know, to kind of, you know, work with, but you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily going to be within six feet of each other. So the question right. here is how much, ha- I mean, cause in football, basketball, baseball, softball, uh, you know, even the tennis team, you know, and and all these other sports, you really can't do much because you have to be in groups. In your right. sport, you don't necessarily have to. How much does this impact your training? And I'm sure you do some weight work, some strength work, mm-hmm. but how much does yeah. this, this whole uh, process that we're going through right now with the COVID-19 impact what you do as far as training? Yeah, um, I don't – it honestly hasn't impacted me – that much uh just because like you said i don't need a whole team um and we don't really need i mean we need a track but we can also do the work off the track too i mean you can run wherever you want so um not necessarily need a facility i think the only thing that really affects my training is the fact that i can't get into a gym um and i also use swimming as my main form of cross training um just because I don't run as much um, since I've had, like, issues with injuries in the past. So I supplement with um, swimming. So I can't do that right now, obviously. Um, But other than that, like, I'm still able to go on my daily runs. Um, I only have one training partner right now. Um, So we, you know, are just – we and we only see each other twice a week um, just during workout days. So a lot of my runs have basically been on my own. So – not a lot has changed. Um, I guess just the biggest change is that things are getting canceled or postponed. Um, so then that changes the way that we train um, and it kind of has to back off the intensity right now because there's not really anything to get ready for. Um, and I think, too, honestly, like with everything going on and all this uncertainty and just like not really knowing when it's going to go back to normal and stuff like that, it's been kind of hard to stay motivated and especially with you know the olympics being postponed and i don't know when i'm going to race next or even if i'm going to race this summer um so i think that's been the hardest part about this whole thing is just trying to get myself to be like okay i got to get the work done regardless of whether i know i'm going to race or not yeah what events are you looking forward to i mean if if yeah. we get when, when we get back, I'm not gonna say it, when we get back to being <laughs> yeah. more normal. Uh, yeah. What what events? Uh, you know, because I mean, you hear about, you know, uh, especially back east, and then obviously, in fact, I'm gonna ask you about Oregon here in a minute. But um, uh-huh. what events on your calendar do you look look forward to and say, boy, sure hope we don't risk this because I want to go running that. Yeah. Um it's hard to say uh, because so the way that the professional world works um, and th- for domestic meets is they're mainly over in June, like June to mid June. And so basically everything in April, May and June have been canceled. Um, so the, for domestic meets, I don't, don't know um, exactly when I would be racing. Um, and then there's meets that happen overseas. Um, there's a whole a circuit of races. Um, but I think that also is going to be iffy just because I don't know oh, yeah. if I want to travel internationally after everything that's been going on. Um, so with that well, being said, there's some 
fall races that are like uh, road miles and stuff. So I think um, if nothing else gets put back on the schedule this summer, I'm looking forward to those. Look ahead to next spring. Uh, Mm Because there's some historic, you know, there uh, even uh, are you still looking to run indoors, too? Yeah. Yeah. I'll plan on running indoors. I'm sure. So I'll I'll be coached by someone differently next year. Um, So I think he takes a different approach than Dave does when it comes Mm -hmm. to racing. Um, So that might change a little bit, but I'm pretty sure I'll still run indoors next year. Okay. Well, uh, here's what I was going to ask you about Oregon. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a, a track guy, <laughs> and you know, uh-huh. I mean, uh, not not uh-huh. not from personal experience. That was not one of my sports in high school. Football, baseball, and and even in those sports, it was kind of like, yeah, I, I, let's run as little as possible here, okay? Yeah, but, right. Uh, <laughs> but you know, like most people, I mean, you know. Runners yeah, of are, course. are a little, I and I've got, but I can see it because I've got a daughter that runs marathons, and she's very okay. much, she's very much in the running mentality. Um, okay. But That's when awesome. I went, when I went up to Oregon to cover Oklahoma State's opening football game with Oregon State, the team yeah. stayed in Eugene, so we stayed in Eugene at a hotel oh, awesome. that, yeah, that had, uh, God, uh, the whole thing in the lobby was Nike and. It was mm-hmm. it was it was really cool, and then I just went walking on the Oregon campus. I walked past their new, the the track facility that they're building. Oh yeah, and, and it's unbelievable. And you really, you know, my daughter wanted me to get her some Steve Prefontaine T-shirts and stuff, oh, so I went nice. to the bookstore mm-hmm. and got that stuff. But when you go to Eugene and you walk around and you get that sense of how important on that campus, especially track yeah. and field is i mean yeah what's when you visited out there because i know you've run out there is is that yeah. is that the pretty cool oh yeah yeah it's definitely i would say like the track capital of the u.s for sure um so it's really cool to be out there just because i feel like um especially in college i mean the big sport obviously is football um so a lot of uh college campuses are dominated by the football program um And then, but you go to Oregon and it's like running matters there. And running is like, you know, the basically, I mean, Bill Knight, you know, donated millions of dollars to Oregon. And he started Nike because as like purely a running company to make running shoes. Um, So he really was the one that like made running a, uh, a big deal at Oregon. And it definitely shows there too. And then you have the... Uh, Nike headquarters in Portland or in Beaverton. So um, Oregon itself is like definitely a very running influenced um, state for sure. Yeah, it was, it was obvious. It was, it was pretty cool. When you go to the bookstore and there's a whole big area that's just Oregon track, you know, track stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You realize, okay, (laughs) this is, this is a big deal. Yeah, and a lot of history, too, in running just with Bill Bowerman, who was Steve Prefontaine's right. coach, um, and Steve Prefontaine in general. So there's, like, a lot of history um, associated around Oregon. And then even recent history, too, a lot of people like Galen Rupp went to Oregon. Um, Matt Centrowitz went to Oregon. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of really good runners that come out of uh, the University of Oregon or go to the University of Oregon. Well, I I know for you it's got to be pretty cool that uh, that a lot of people know that Sinclair Johnson went to Oklahoma State and what she did. So, <laughs> congratulations on your Thank college. You. Yeah, congratulations on your college career and uh, best wishes moving forward. And and I know this it's going to cause me whenever I see there's a big track and field event on. Uh, it's going to cause me to check and see if Sinclair Johnson's entered and watch that. So, oh, uh, thank you. That means a lot. Well, you made you made running more important at Oklahoma State. Dave has done that <laughs> with his teams and and his cross country and all that. Hopefully, uh, this won't endanger because Oklahoma State's hosting uh, the cross country NCAA's yeah, next year. Yeah, so, correct. Yeah. Yeah, we we don't yeah. want that to miss being on our campus. We already already missed no, out on not. tennis. So, yeah, I know. That's such a bummer. Yeah. It is, because so. that, that was going to be, uh, I don't know how many people in Stillwater understand how big an event that would have been. I yeah. was looking forward. It was going to be very fun. Yeah, 
Yeah, I've been to a few tennis matches here, and they're they're really entertaining. So I definitely would have gone to the national championship, especially since it's here. But, so that's that's a bummer. Hopefully they'll get it back and soon. <laughs> Well, hey, uh, again, best wishes to you and postgraduate and your professional career. And we'll look forward to, to seeing how things go and your events and hopefully uh, Tokyo next summer. Good yes, luck with it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Sinclair Johnson, again, national champion for Oklahoma State in track and field and uh, record setter. It was a big, it was a big deal last year. Uh, I was, I mean, and her move, her winning move was classic. So um, appreciate her being on. All right, we need to take a time out. We'll come back. And, uh, hey, we've got it open here for a while. Josh Holliday is going to be with us during the noon hour, uh, at the top of the noon hour. But uh, we've got time to talk to you, time to take TPTs. Phone numbers, 533-1020, 533 -1020.